Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Undertale. Last episode, we pet even more dogs. In this episode, we're going to cross the bridge like I promised we'd do last episode. Human! This is your final and most dangerous challenge. Behold, the gauntlet of deadly terror. And there's yet another appearance of the annoying dog. When I say the word, it will fully activate. Cannons will fire, spikes will swing, blades will slice. Each part will swing violently up and down. Only the tiniest chance of victory will be. Are you ready? Because I am about to do it. Well, what's the hold up? Hold up? What hold up? I'm... I'm about to activate it now! That, uh... Doesn't look very activated. Well... This challenge... Seems... Maybe... Too easy to defeat the human one. Yeah, we can use this one. I'm a skeleton with standards. My puzzles are very fair. My traps are expertly cooked. But this method is too direct. No class. And away it goes. Whew. What are you looking at? This was another decisive victory for Paris. Nah. Heh. Heh. I don't know what my brother's gonna do now. If I were you, I would make sure I understand blue attacks. Ah, yes, the blue stop sign attacks. And now, after a long, long wait, we're finally at Snowden Town. The sight of such a friendly town fills you with determination. I think I'm gonna deposit the butterscotch pie for now. Hello, traveler. How can I help you? Uh, let's talk. Hiya! Welcome to Snowden. Can't remember the last time I saw a fresh face around here. Where'd you come from? The capital? You don't look like a tourist. Are you here by yourself? You wanna know what to do here in Snowden? Ruby's has food, and the library has information. If you're tired, you can take a nap at the inn. It's right next to- it's right next door. My sister owns it. And if you're bored, you can sit outside and watch those wacky skeletons do their thing. There's two of them. Brothers, I think. They just showed up one day and asserted themselves. The town has gotten a lot more interesting since then. Think back to your history class. A long time ago, monsters lived in the ruins back there in the forest. Long story short, we all decided to leave the ruins and head for the end of the cavern. Along the way, some fuzzy folk decided they liked the cold and set up camp in Snowden. Oh, and don't think about trying to explore the ruins. The door's been locked for ages. So unless you're a ghost or can burrow under the door, forget about it. Life is the same as usual. A little claustrophobic, but we all know deep down that freedom is coming, don't we? As long as we got that hope, we can grit our teeth and face the same struggles day after day. That's life, ain't it? So, this is a vendor. Or a saleswoman, or whatever you want to call it. She sells tough gloves, which we already have one. Wait, did we? Yeah, we already have one. Uh, for 50G, and a manly bandana, which is a piece of equipment, piece of armor, and it is the uh, armor equivalent of the tough glove. Uh, a bicycle, it heals 11 HP twice, so you can eat it once, heal 8, 11 HP, and you can use it again, and it'll aptly be named a unicycle for 11 HP again. And then finally, a cinnamon bun heals 22 HP, which is essentially the same as a bicycle, but it also heals it in one turn, because, I mean, I feel like that's obvious. And it also, it's more cost-efficient, because the bicycle heals... Actually, no. No, it's not. The bicycle is more cost-efficient, because 
I guess it's just... The bicycle is, it heals 22 HP, but it costs two turns to use, but it's also cheaper. Whereas the cinnamon bun is a little bit more expensive, but it heals it all in one turn. So it's really just up to you. I think I'm going to go with the cinnamon bun. And something that all vendors have in common is... Huh? Sell something. Does this look like a pawn shop? I don't know how it works where you're from, from but... If I started spending money on old branches and used bandages, I'd be out of business in a jiffy. No vendor in the game will allow you to sell things. It's kind of a running gag. Well, almost all vendors. I think for now, I think I might just want to go ahead and clip the manly bandana. Manly bandana, armor defense 7. This has seen some wear. It has abs drawn on it. Quick manly bandana. I can input the faded ribbon and check out the inn. Welcome to Snowden Inn, Snowden's premier hotel. One night is 80 G. A bit of a steep price, but it's very much worth it. Here's your room key. Make sure to bumble go up. Hiya! You look like you had a great sleep. Which is incredible, because you were only up there for about two minutes. Here's your money back. You can pay me if you're going to stay overnight. A lot of people look at that super steep price and immediately say, No way am I going to pay for that much for, what, a free heal? A. You get your money back. And B. It's not just a free heal. You'll notice that our HP is 10 more than our max. And that's what I was, that's what I meant by uh, our max HP, if you're doing a pacifist run, will be always 20, at least for now. Because you can increase it to above the max if you stay at an inn. So yeah, very handy. What do you have to say? Isn't my little cinnamon just the cutest? Bun buns are so adorable. <laughs> what about you? That lady over there. Something about her disturbs me. Why? Bun 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 bun. Alright. Awful teens tormented a local monster by decorating its tree like, oh, that must be the gift shop. So we started giving that monster presents to make it feel better. Now it's a tradition to put presents underneath a decorated tree. Yo, you're a kid too, right? I can tell, because you're wearing a striped shirt. So was that just tradition that all children wear striped shirts? This town doesn't have a mayor, but if there's ever a problem, a skeleton will tell a fish lady about it. That's politics. Everyone is always leaving. No, not leaving. Everyone is always laughing and... Oh, wait, no. I have a great idea for this. We all know the underground has problems, but we smile anyway. Why? You can't do anything, so why be morose about it? That's a good way of thinking. Let's play Monsters and Humans. You aren't gonna make me be the human again, are you? Ah, oh, to be young again. The world sure shut down. Ah, what a beautiful knock. Maybe if I don't answer, I'll hear it again. Ah, my patience rewards me. Huh? Hello, can I speak to... Wait a second. 
Is this the wrong number? Yeah, it's a long story, but this is the introduction to fun values. Who oh boy, are they confusing. Um... I don't know how to explain them, they're very confusing. Basically, your game has a one, it picks one number at random out of a hundred, and depending on which number you get, a specific scenario will happen. For example, uh, I don't remember which number it is, but you'll get, sometimes you'll get a call from Sans talking about, is your refrigerator running? Sometimes you'll get a call from uh, a mysterious voice asking to call a pizza, and sometimes nothing will happen at all. And it doesn't need to be just in that little crevice near outlooking the river either, it'll happen anywhere, depending on what fun value you have. And when I was saying that Gaster isn't in the game, um, I was actually wrong about that because if you have a fun value of 66 specifically, then you'll be able to have a 1 in 10 chance of being able to find a room in an area that we have yet to find yet that has him in it. Unfortunately, I did not get 66, I think I got like 31. You can find out which fun value you have by searching through the files. But, yeah, it's very confusing, and I'm just gonna leave it at that. That look in your eye. You're someone that has difficulty solving Junior Jumble, aren't you? I love working on the newspaper. There's so little to report that j we just fill it with comics and games. Is that a cigarette? Is that a cigar? Yeah, it must be. It totally is. When I was younger, my teachers gave me word searches when they ran out of assignments. I thought they were a waste of time. But look at me now. I'm the number one word search creator in the entire underground. Welcome to the library. Yes, we know. The sign is misspelled. Yep, the sign says... Librarby. Librarby. <laughs> it's a mailbox overflowing with unread junk mail. This mailbox is labeled Papyrus. Look inside. It's empty. I wonder whose mailbox that must be then. It's locked. Hmm. It's also locked. Interesting. It's locked from the inside. And how do we get in there? Um, I have an odd feeling that we're going to be, there's a boss fight ahead. So I think I'm just going to explore a little bit more. These little igloos can be used as fast travel systems, so, sort of. Uh, I don't really know what else to do, but I think we're just gonna... I think I just gotta let, leave off the episode a little bit early because there's really not much else we can do. So... I think I'll, I'll just see you guys next time, and I'll see you next episode when we finally confront the big man himself. See you guys then.